We have been told that the Prophet ﷺ was born on the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal, and this is the commonly known date. Yet the fact of the matter is that our early historical textbooks mention a number of dates. And there is no unanimous agreed upon decision regarding the date of the Prophet's birth. In the famous hadith of Sahih Muslim, the man asked the Prophet ﷺ, why do you fast on Mondays? He said, this was the day I was born on. And this was the day that revelation began to me. I.e. Iqra came down on Monday. So we know for a fact he was born on a Monday. How about a year? There's a beautiful narration in which Uthman ibn Affan asks one of the oldest uh, Qurashis, and his name is Qubath ibn Ashyam, after the death of the Prophet. He asks him, Anta akbaru min Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Are you akbar, meaning older, because he's an old, old man. But of course, akbar also means bigger or grander. Qubayt smiles and he goes, The Prophet sallallahu is akbar minni, but I am older than him. Asannu minhu. He changed the question because the question is alluding to the fact, are you bigger than the Prophet sallallahu So he said, no, the Prophet is bigger than me, but I am older than him. The Prophet was born Am al Fil. Aha, we have a year now. He was born in the year of the elephant. And as for me, I remember my mother taking me outside of Mecca as a child and I saw the dried up green dung that the elephants had left. That he remembers the elephant's dung, which is basically the same year, the year of the elephants, right? And the Prophet was born that year. So he's a little bit older than the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet is bigger than him. This hadith is narrated in Tirmidhi. Somebody asked another Sahabi, Suwayd ibn Ghafla, about the Prophet's birth, and he said, The Prophet and I were both born the same year, Am al Fil, the year of the elephant. So from both of these narrations, we can pretty much verify that the Prophet ﷺ was born in the year of the elephant. The vast majority of early historians said he was born in the year of the elephant. We already said the Arabs did not have a calendar, that they would have a calendar based upon events. Okay, what is the year of the elephant? Majority of historians say this corresponds to 570 of the Christian era. 570 CE, the Prophet ﷺ was born. How about the month and the day of the month? Ibn Ishaq says, without any chain of narrators, he's writing from himself, that the Prophet ﷺ was born on a Monday, the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal, in the year of the elephant. So this explains why this opinion is present. However, between him and the Prophet ﷺ, almost 200 years, because remember going back to the birth of the Prophet ﷺ, is 53 before Hijrah. And he doesn't tell us where he gets it from, who's narrating this to him, what is the chain of narrators. When we look at the second earliest book, and this is called the Tabaqat of Ibn Sa'd, which was written around 220 or so Hijrah, it is said that the Prophet ﷺ was born on a Monday. Some people say, I quote, he was born on the 10th of Rabi' al-Awwal. Others say he was born on the 2nd of Rabi' al-Awwal. End quote. Ibn Abbas also said the 10th of Rabi' al-Awwal. Ibn Kathir in his Al-Bidayah wa Nihaya says that the majority opinion is that the Prophet was born in Rabi' al-Awwal and then scholars differed with regards to the date of his birth. One group said he was born on the 2nd of Rabi' al-Awwal. Ibn Kathir says, this was the opinion of Abu Ma'shar al-Sindi, a famous scholar of history, died 171. It was also the opinion of Ibn Abd al-Barr, a very famous scholar of Andalus, died 463. It was also the opinion of Al-Waqidi, who died 207. Al-Waqidi is one of the most famous historians of early Islam. Ibn Kathir goes on. Another opinion is that he was born on the 8th of Rabi' al-Awwal. He says, this is the opinion of Ibn Hazm. A famous scholar of Andalus, Imam Malik ibn Anas, you all know Imam Malik, the scholar of Medina. And the opinion of Az Zuhri, who is, again, I mean, I cannot explain how famous Az Zuhri is, 128 Hijrah, and opinion of Muhammad ibn Jubayr ibn Mut'im. Ibn Kathir moves on. A third opinion is that he was born on the 10th of Rabi' al-Awwal. He says, this is the opinion of Ibn Asakir and the opinion of Ja'far al-Sadiq. 
He's the descendant of the Prophet ﷺ and the Shia consider him to be one of the Imams. Ibn Kathir says the fourth opinion is that he was born on the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal and this is the opinion of Ibn Ishaq. But there is no Isnad on this matter. Ibn Kathir does say that this is the most popular opinion in his time. Ibn Kathir died 770 something, way after. In medieval Islam, 12th Rabi'ul is the most popular opinion. And from medieval Islam up until our times is the most popular. But in early Islam it was not the most popular. The 5th opinion, the 17th of Rabi'ul Awwal, the 6th opinion, the 22nd of Rabi'ul Awwal, the 7th opinion, he wasn't even born in Rabi'ul Awwal, he was born in Ramadan. And this is the opinion of Zubayr ibn Bakkar, who was the first scholar to ever write a history on Makkah. And he died 256 Hijrah. And then there are other opinions as well. To summarize, there are over 10 opinions in the earliest books of Islam, about the exact day that the Prophet ﷺ was born, none of them have solid evidence. All of them are the opinions of early authors and narrators. And to be very academic, the opinion of the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal seems to have much less weight than the 2nd and the 8th and the 10th. Because these three have tabi'un taba tabi'un. They have descendants of the Prophet ﷺ. Whereas the opinion of the 12th, it is by Ibn Ishaq, who is 200 years after the birth of the Prophet and he doesn't have any chain. Why then is the opinion of the 12th of Rabi' al the most popular, so much so that for many of you it's shocking that I'm daring to go against this fact of history, right? Very easy to respond. Point number one, 90% of authors who write about Sirah, they only rely on Ibn Ishaq. They just take Ibn Ishaq and summarize it, redo it, translate it, do this and that. That's what they do. And it's a good book, but it's not the only book. The second reason why the 12th of Rabi'ul became so popular, and this leads us to a controversial issue, is that the first time that the Prophet's birthday was celebrated as a public event, i.e. the Mawlid al-Nabi or the Milad al-Nabi as we call it, the authorities who celebrated it chose the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal. Now, that's it. It just spread like wildfire. The day and the event and the custom. The first recorded instance that we have of anybody celebrating Milad al-Nabi is around 517 Hijrah, i.e. the 6th century of Islam. So for 500 years, the concept of celebrating the birthday of the Prophet is simply unknown to the Muslims. Celebrating birthdays is not a custom that comes from Islam or from... I'm not saying it's haram by the way, I'm saying it's not something that the Arabs would do. The concept of celebrating it is a very late addition. And the first group that celebrated it were the Fatimids of Egypt. They are uh, an extreme Shi'i dynasty. And of course there's a reason why rulers have festivals. Distracting, economy, people come and buy and sell, popularity of the ruling family, and the Fatimids had over 30 or 40 public festivals throughout the year. Every few weeks there was a major event and festival. And they celebrated Ghadir Khum, they celebrated 10th of Muharram, these are all Shia festivals. They celebrated the birth of this Imam, the death of that Imam, and of those celebrations it is said, they celebrated the birthday of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu This is the first time in Islamic history that we come across the celebration of the birthday of the Prophet When it was done in Fatimid Egypt, then, 150 years later, some Sunni governors thought this was a good idea and they imported this particular festival to Mosul, which is outside of, uh, of Baghdad, it's a place in Iraq. The first uh, Sunni governor, he was not a Khalifa, the first Sunni governor who celebrated uh, the Mawlid, celebrated it around 670 or so Hijrah. So for 670 years this was unknown in the Muslim world. So it became literally a national festival. In Sunni lands, initially some scholars opposed it. Some scholars you know, said, well, if you do it with these conditions, it's okay. After a while, under public pressure, just the floodgates opened and it became a very, very common uh, festival. And you all know my opinion on this is that the way to celebrate the birthday of the Prophet if you really wanted to celebrate it, is to fast on Mondays. Because that's what he would do. We also know that and there are chains of narrators back to Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib who died 95 Hijrah, so there's a gap, he didn't see the Prophet But he said that it has been narrated to me that the Prophet was born at high noon. 
Sayyid ibn Musayyib died 95. His father is of the age of the companions. And this is the only narration that we have about the timing of his birth. The Prophet is saying that my mother saw a light either in a dream or a physical light, she doesn't mention what, coming from her that came all the way and illuminated the palaces of the cities of Busra in, in Syria. Allah knows best, but there's some things that have been derived here, that Syria is a blessed land. And that is why Allah says in the Quran, Subhana li asra bi abdihi laylan min al-masjid al-harami ila al-masjid al-aqsa alladhi barakna hawlahu. There is baraka around Masjid al-Aqsa. Sham, there is Baraka over there. And the Prophet predicted that Sham will remain a fortress of Islam. And Sham was the first province that was conquered after the Arabian Peninsula. And we also believe as Muslims that Isa ibn Maryam will come down in Sham. 